they have to be able to communicate, and how do they communicate? With their cell phones, of course. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very old cartoon, but here are the cells, you know, you know where you need to go. How do we how do they communicate with each other? So how many of you read Bruce Lipton's work? So some of you. Okay, so Bruce talks a lot about communication of cells. So let's look at the next slide. So here's I know I've got a laser pointer someplace. Here's a simple diagram of what we can think a cell looks like. And on the surface of the cell are these antenna, or receptor sites. And these receptor sites are what Bruce might we calls the membrane. It is on the surface membrane. These receptor sites pick up information. So if we're stressed, if we're hungry, whatever molecules we're churning out, our internal pharmacy, the cell receives the information on the outside. Now in this drawing, what we do know about these receptor sites, they're not all the same. They all have different shapes. So in the next slide. So here you can just get an idea of all the different shapes. A cell may have a thousand different receptor sites. One cell, a thousand different kinds of receptor sites on the surface. And then, okay, so now this cell has to make a decision. It's received a couple of different messages, as an example. It's received, a, it's stressed out, fight or flight. It's received adrenaline. So I'm showing this for you to get a, a feel for the different shapes of molecules, that how our body works um, is through a, a geometry or a shape. So adrenaline will need a different receptor on the surface than when we drink caffeine. But receiving the information isn't enough for the cell. It's just receiving the information. What the cell has to respond, and how the cell responds, next slide. Oh, I forgot that, it's gotta decide. How the cell responds is, the really the newest part of the cell that's being recognized in science. And, and for me, it's still, it's still not recognized by a lot of scientists, which is surprising. If you ever had high school biology or college biology, you probably remember hearing the cell is made up of membrane and nucleus and cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is like gel. And recently I took a pretty new book out on biology, and that's the way it was written. But in the gel, actually, is this fabric of the cell, and it's called the cytoskeleton. So it was only, this is a uh, drawing, but it was only with spe special technology could it be found that there's this fabric inside the cell. And what, to me, has become really exciting about the fabric, the fabric is the decision maker. So you've got these receiving sites occupied by information, but something has to respond inside. And so these strings, so remember, um, your cells are made of strings and str tubes and struts. They are the responders. Mm, let me see what the next slide is. I was going to read this, but can we go back? I was going to read it, but it's a little bit easier for me just to talk it. Um, another kind of interesting story, in the late 90s I was in a bookstore up in Marin County and there were two magazines that attracted my attention. One was Scientific American, which is obvious, obvious, and the other one was Yoga Journal. The Scientific American, which is where this is from, had an article on architecture of life and the Yoga Journal had an article by Carlos Castaneda on, on magical passes. And both, so I took bought both those journal magazines, and they both used the term tensegrity. A term, how many of you have ever heard tensegrity? So a few of you. So I'd never heard that term before. Carlos said magical passes, which were physical movements uh, passed down by the ancient sorcerers that you would use 
he never talked about the cells, but he called them tensegrity movements, and he said, you can use them to change your consciousness. We'll get to that in a bit. Donald Ingvar at Harvard wrote this amazing article, and uh, look up Ingvar to get some of his references and see how this works. He's got some interactive things on his website that you can really see how this system works. Because it's the most exciting system to me in science. So what Ingvar did, a, a professor in Harvard, wanted to see if he could grow some cells. Well, if you've ever tried to grow cells in the laboratory, you know they need a certain kind of surface to grow on, and what those cells will do will attach to the surface. They get sticky, they attach to the surface. And what he discovered was when cells attach to a surface, they stretch out, they become tense. They change this fabric. And in real life, if you've got a, if you've got a wound, a cut, the cells have to fill the space. So they spread out to reproduce and fill the space. When they've finished filling the space, they now use another program. So it's one genetic program to reproduce itself, and it's another genetic program. Okay, we filled up the dish. We no longer can reproduce. We've got no more space. We've got to let go a little bit of this tension in the dish, in the cell. And now another genetic program is expressed for maturing. So cells can only do either or. They can either reproduce or they mature, or they can do, make their products of mature cells. They can't do it at the same time. And th so that's another level of tension. And then, if you look at cells as being altruistic, if the dish is so full and there's no more food in the dish, then the cells let go of all their tension and they program their cell death. So the cells in the dish all had identical genes. The only difference was the mechanical tension on the cell. And to me, what is really exciting about that, we're discovering there's a difference whether, in the laboratory for sure, whether cells are grown on rigid dishes or gel-like dishes. And why does that make a difference if it's only in a lab? Because now people are looking at how can we change cancer cells by changing their inner environment and changing it on a, mecha on a mechanical level. So the next slide, and I probably will let you ask this. So the term tensegrity was coined by Buckminster Fuller. And Buckminster Fuller, this word includes tension and integrity. And what tensegrity means is for something to maintain its integrity, especially if it's a tensegrity item, um, it needs to balance the forces that are inside and outside. It needs to balance the compression and the contraction. So the geodesic dome is a perfect example of a, ten a tensegrity structure. Lots of, made of lots of triangles. The most stable human-made uh, construction. Cells are tensegrity structures. Molecules are tensegrity structures. So for me, and I think it's the next slide. Okay. What? So these are actual cells, it's not drawings. You can see the strings in the cell, and I tend to leap into seeing correspondences um, maybe where somebody else might not. And seeing that the cells really have this string structure that is the decision maker, basically. It helps the cell decide which direction it's going to take. I go into, oh, strings. If our cells have the string structure, what do we know about strings? Well, strings vibrate. Strings, you pluck a string on a guitar, nearby strings will start vibrating and res in sympathy, if you will, or resonating with it. So all of a sudden, from again, from my perspective, is we have structures in our cells that we can now understand how some of these energy practices work. 
It's one thing to talk about yoga as a stress-relieving practice, or it teaches you about stretching your body and being better shape. But having a structure inside your cells for someone like me who needs reasons, like, oh, now I understand why humming might be good, or chanting might be good, or why yoga really is okay. Uh, so a lot of the practices that have come to the West from ancient traditions, well, there's something here that makes a difference. And, and I, I know exercise is good, but I don't always do it. I need, I'm not the most disciplined. And so now, once I discovered this, and I realized I'm sitting at my computer and I don't really want to go outside, I'm going to take my shells for a walk because they need to stretch. They need that movement. Life doesn't happen without movement. In fact, some of the scientists who study these structures, it's called the cytoskeleton, um, say that movement is the proof that there's cell intelligence. So an essential part of who we are is uh, string, stringy. <laughs>